The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what goes on in Summerfield. Well, you'd hardly know the place. Summerfield, which usually can boast no more than a second-run movie, is suddenly all aflutter over the prospect of an evening of grand opera. And how did this come to be? Well, it seems that Mrs. Rumson Bullard, while on a recent trip to New York bought herself a very expensive evening gown. Do you like it, Rumson? Yes, yes, it's very becoming. But where on earth are you going to wear it in this town? I know. That's the only thing. Never fear. Where such things are at stake, woman will find a way. And so it is that a touring opera company is scheduled for a single performance at the dusty old Summerfield Opera House underwritten by such prominent citizens as Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve and Judge <laughs> Horace Hooker. In fact, the two of them are up early and in Mr. Gildersleeve's study right now discussing the matter. What seems to be your problem, Judge? Women. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you come to get mixed up with women at your age? You know, it's this darn opera. They made me chairman of the Committee on Arrangements. I don't know why I ever said I'd do it. Nothing but a lot of jealous women in my hair all day long. <laughs> you never could handle women, you know, Judge. Well, you may be right. Say, Gildy, maybe you... Oh, no, no thanks. I've done enough. I've sold my $75 worth of tickets for the opera, and that's plenty. But, Gildy, you're the man they should have appointed to head this committee in the first place. That may well be. But it so happens they didn't. Now let them try to get along without me. Gildy, that's not the spirit. If they want to appoint some tactless old goat who doesn't know the first thing about handling women, who puts his foot in his big mouth every time he opens it, and probably insults him when he thinks he's paying him a compliment... You're right, Gildy. I am tactless. I realize that. Handling women is an art, Horace. It's an instinct. You're either born with it or you aren't. That's so true. And you do it so well. <laughs> I envy you, Gildy. I truly do. Well, I could probably give you a few tips, but uh, why should I? Why should you get the credit while I... Exactly. Huh? <laughs> now, why don't we fool them, Gildy? Why don't we just take matters into our own hands and handle it the way it should have been handled in the first place? Oh, how's that? Well, we won't consult anybody about it. I'll just resign in your favor. And... Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, you said yourself you're the obvious man for the job. Well, I don't know that I said it. Well, there's hardly any work involved, Gildy. It's all done, practically. All it calls for now is someone to act as referee, as it were, between the various women. Someone with your deaf touch, Gildy. Uh-huh. Someone who has a way with the ladies. You devil, you. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll do it, huh? Now, well, wait a minute. I'll get it, Bertie. <laughs> now what? I gotta be getting down to the office. Well, I'll drive you down, Gildy. Oh, Leela, hello. Get your hat and coat, Frock Martin. You're coming with me. Coming where? To the dressmaker. What? I'm having a new gown made for the opera, and I'm having a fitting at 9.30. I want you to come and see it. Oh, but I can't. But I want you to pass on it, Frock Martin. I want to know if you approve. Some people might think it was a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd like to, but I can't, Leela. I got a million things to do. Oh, now run and get your coach you here. I won't take no for an answer. Besides, how am I going to get there if you don't drive me? Well, gosh, all right, wait there. I'll go get the car out. Hello, Leela. Horace, I didn't know you were over here. Did you hear the news, Leela? Gildy's taking over the chairmanship of the committee on arrangements for the opera. It's a tremendous honor. Horace, you didn't stick Frock Martin with that. Well, he claims he has a way with the women. <laughs> uh, 
Is this the place, Leela? Wonder she wouldn't fix her gate. Mm, you wouldn't say that if you knew her. Why? Poor Miss Tate. She's as poor as a church mouse. But she's a wonderful dressmaker. Everyone in town goes to her. Well, if everyone goes to her, why is she so poor? Mm, I guess she's just been too busy ever to stop and figure that out. You... <laughs> Where's the bell? Oh. Gosh, I haven't seen one of these since I called on the Peavies. <laughs> oh, come in. Come in, Mrs. Ransom. Oh, thank you, Miss Tate. This is Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? It, aren't you afraid you'll swallow those pins? Oh, oh, I'm so used to keeping pins in my mouth, I often forget they're there. It <laughs> looks dangerous. <laughs> I, I know you hate me for being late, Miss Tate, but I had to wait for Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> He just insisted on coming along to see my new gown. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it doesn't matter. Everybody's late. They've all arrived at once. Dear, dear, let me see. Now, where can I put you? The gown's ready. I finished it last night. Oh, you're going to love it, Throckmorton. I can't put you in the bedroom. Mrs. Pettibone's in there. Oh, and Mrs. Bullard's in the sewing room. Mrs. Bullard? I thought she bought her gown in New York. She did, but it had to be let out a little. <laughs> Oh, not terrible. Anyway, here's yours. Now, if we can just... Uh, don't look, Trot Martin. Close your eyes, you hear? Close my eyes, why? Because I don't want you to see it till I'm in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Leela, they're closed. <laughs> oh, dear, if everybody didn't arrive just at the same time. Oh, I know. I'll change in the bathroom. Oh, would you mind? Oh, thank you. I won't be in a minute, Throckmorton. Well, I won't hold my breath. <laughs> Things are so upset here, I feel I should apologize. It's just been... Well, it's more than I can handle, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> you seem pretty busy, all right. <laughs> busy? Well, I've never seen anything like it. Hmm? Uh... It's all right if you open your eyes now, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Miss Tate, I need help here, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, right away, Mrs. Bullard. Excuse me. Oh, certainly. Uh, Miss Tate. Uh, just a moment, Mrs. Pettibone. Why did I come here? By getting caught in a hen roost. <laughs> I suppose she wonders what I'm doing tagging around with Leela. So do I. Uh, as I was saying, Mr. Gildersleeve, I've been so... Right. Uh, Miss Tate, mm -hmm, those pins. Oh, uh, don't worry. I always carry them in my mouth. <laughs> Though goodness knows I'm so distracted these days, it's a wonder I don't go to bed with them. You ought to check. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I haven't been to bed for two nights. Oh. <laughs> Miss Tate. Uh, Cassie. My head is just in a spin today. Now, let's see. That was Mrs. Pettibone. That sounded like her. You better sit down for a minute. Oh, dear, someone else. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Pettibone. Ooh, the poor woman is, woman is running a madhouse. Yeah. It's beginning to get me. <laughs> yeah, I'd sure like to get out of here. Oh, come in. Come in, Miss Goodwin. Miss Goodwin. Hmm. I hope I haven't come at a bad time, but I have an appointment in half an hour with... Rockmorton. <laughs> Hello, Eve. Well, what in the world are you doing here? Me? Well, I, uh, I just happened to, uh... I didn't know you were interested in dressmaking. Oh, so I'm not. <laughs> well, I don't understand. Why, well, here I am, Rockmorton. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Eve, you know Leela. Leela, you know Eve. Yes, indeed. Uh, how are you, Mrs. Ransom? Uh, yes, I guess everybody knows everybody. <laughs> oh, Miss Tate. Oh, of course. Sure, you know him. Sure. <laughs> well, aren't you going to say anything about the gown, Throckmorton? Yes, very nice, Leela. <laughs> it's a lovely gown, Mrs. Ransom. It won't fall off, will it? <laughs> well, don't you worry about that. But I see one thing wrong with it. I'll just put a pin in here, so... I declare, I just don't know how the opera would ever get on without Miss Tate. Do you, Miss Goodwin? That's quite true. Miss Tate is really the keystone. And another pin in here, just... Ouch! Oh, I stuck you. Oh, do forgive me. I'm so terribly sorry, Mrs. Ransom. Why, I watch it. I don't know how it happened. My hand shook, I guess. I'm so nervous today anyway. Now, let me try once more. I'll be very careful. 
Oh, dear. Where did I put those pins? Pins? Oh, in your mouth. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, one more. Miss Hayes, how long do I have to wait? I've been here half an hour. Oh, dear. I might remind you, Mrs. Pettibone, that I arrived here before you did. My appointment was for 9.30, and that's when I got here. Oh, dear. Well, I don't want to step out of turn, Miss Tate, but unless I can have my fitting within the next 15 Just minutes... Just a minute, I everybody. Won't... I might remind you that I'm having my fitting now. Continue, Miss Tate. Well, I like that. Uh, Comes in here after everybody I else. I was the first quick. one here. Well, I told Miss Tate when I arrived, I have an appointment. I'm getting and if I can't get my fitting i Yeah, Miss Tate. Oh, oh catch her, Throckmorton. Oh, gracious. Oh, she's fainted. Fainted nothing. What happened? I know what happened. She swallowed those pins. Here, take her, somebody. Let a man handle this. Let me at that telephone. Well, there goes my fitting. Your fitting? There goes the opera. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Mr. Lang, I'm very grateful to you. Well, that's nice to hear. What have I done? It was you who put me wise to parquet margarine. You see, I fix three lunch boxes every day, and it takes a lot of spread for the sandwiches. And you find that parquet margarine spreads quickly and easily, don't you? Even when you first take it out of the refrigerator. Yes, that's one reason I like to use it. Because I have to work fast, preparing six to eight sandwiches while my children and husband are having breakfast. Oh, six to eight sandwiches do take a lot of spread, don't they? And that's another reason I'm glad you told me about parquet margarine. It's so economical. Well, that's what a lot of women are finding out. Parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. And the important thing to remember is that it's one of the best energy foods you can buy. Rich in nourishment and fortified with important vitamin A. I want to say, too, that my family likes Parquet's fresh, sweet flavor. Well, now you've made me grateful to you. Because I think you've convinced a lot of other people that they ought to try Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Several days have passed, and now we find him at home, wrestling with some of the operatic problems left unsolved by Judge Horace Hooker. Simultaneously, and with more or less assistance from the rest of the household, he's trying to get the checks in the mail for his November bills. All right, Leroy, what's next? Summerfield Meat Market, $32.25. $32 worth of meat? There isn't that much meat in the whole world. You want the items? November 1st, pork chops. November 2nd... Never mind. Bertie's checked it. Summerfield Meat Market. Telephone! 32 and 25 hundreds. Mr. Gillespie's residence. Oh, yes, Miss Bullard. He's right here. Miss Bullard, across the street, Miss Gillespie. Oh, thanks. I wonder what she wants. Keep working, Leroy. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm sorry to bother you, but a question has come up. That's what I'm here for, Mrs. Bullard. What is it? Well, it seems that there hasn't been any official decision on who is to be head patroness for the opera. Oh? But naturally, since the whole thing was my idea in the first place, why, naturally, I assumed that I... Well, yes, I suppose that's right if you thought the whole thing up. I was sure you'd agree with me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Absolutely. But I just wanted to make it official. Thanks ever so much. You're welcome, Mrs. Bullard. Goodbye. Bye. All right, she's head patroness, whatever that means. <laughs> How are the envelopes coming, Leroy? Pretty good. Do I have to finish them now? Well, I'd like to establish my credit, so maybe I can do a little Christmas shopping. Let's get going. I made a blot on one envelope. Does it matter? This one. Well, you can still read it. Acme cleaners. If they don't like it, they can clean it. <laughs> What's next? Summerfield Light and Power, 260. Yeah, the thieves. <laughs> Summerfield L and P, two and sixty hundreds. 
Next. Summerfield Water Department, 502. Outrageous. That's for two months. You didn't pay last month. <laughs> I'll have to, have to write myself a letter. <laughs> Doorbell. I'll get it, Leroy. It's Miss Goodwin. I saw her coming up the walk. Oh, yes, Miss Goodwin. Something about the programs, I guess. Hello, Miss Goodwin. Hello, Marjorie. I know your uncle's off is busy, but I'd like to see him just for a minute. Sure, come on in. Hello, Eve. Glad to see you. Hello, George Morton. Leroy. Hi, Miss Goodwin. How's the opera coming along? Oh, I think we'll get it on all right. Doc Morton, if you've got a minute. Sure, Eve. Sit down. Take off your coat. Take Miss Goodwin's coat, Leroy. Go out and play. But the bills. Go out and play. <laughs> Marjorie, you too. Go out and play? I'm not a child, Uncle Mort. If you want me to leave the room, say so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of this is necessary, Throckmorton. But we're going to have a opera a week from today, you know. Oh, yes. The important thing is we ought to decide which one it's going to be. Oh, yes. Well, what operas has this company got? Well, they offer a choice of three for this kind of engagement. Carmen, Rigoletto, or Tannhauser. Let's make it Tannhauser. Tannhauser. All right, but why? Never mind why. You asked me which opera, and I told you. Bing, bing, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm glad you settled it. I must say men are awfully efficient. Well, of course, I'm an executive. <laughs> but I think you're efficient, too, Eve. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. You've got your mind on the opera, not on what you can get out of it. <laughs> well, I've got to go and see Hogan Brothers about their ad. They're taking the back cover. That a girl. You know, Eve, you ought to get a percentage of the profits. I just hope there are some. Well, drop in any time, Eve. Any time you need a quick decision, bing, bing, you know where to come. <laughs> It's a great comfort. Uh, goodbye, Eve. Goodbye, Throckmorton. Oh, by the way, the program should include the name of the head patroness. I sort of wondered... Oh, you want to be head patroness, is that it? Well, then I... Then head patroness you shall be. <laughs> yes, sir, let's not beat around the bush. Well, do you really think I deserve it? I don't know who deserves it more. Consider it settled. Bing, bing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Goodbye, Throckmorton. Ta-ta, Eve. Come around next week. I'll have mistletoe. <laughs> Uncle Mort, I heard you tell Mrs. Bullard she could be head patroness. What's the difference? Tell one, tell all. <laughs> An executive can't bother with details, my dear. Oh, so that's it. Mr. Gilfried, you're going downtown today. You're going to be here for lunch. I'll be here, Bertie, working. But I don't want anything elaborate, just a tray at my desk. Yes, sir. About a three-course train? Yeah. <laughs> Fine, buddy. Okay, I'll get working on it. <laughs> uh, now what? Hello? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is Mrs. Pettibone. Oh, yes, Mrs. Pettibone. How's everything going? Just splendidly. The Women's Club has sold every single one of its tickets. We're over the top. Uh, great work, Mrs. Pettibone. Great work. Well, I guess you can relax a little now. <laughs> I think I should. But uh, there's something I want to ask you. Since the Women's Club is sponsoring the opera, and since I'm the president of the club, I suppose I am to be the head patroness, am I not? <laughs> I didn't catch that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, oh, yes. You say you want to be head patroness, Mrs. Pettibone? I say I should be. Well, all right. After all, it's only... It's only fair. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Pettibone. In fact, don't mention it. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Just a title. What difference does it make? Uh, but these women... Come in. You, Rock Martin. All right, you can be head patroness of the opera. Oh, Rock Martin, you darling. Well, that was what you wanted, wasn't it? No, but I think it's just lovely. <laughs> All right, now let me get back to work or there won't be any opera. Scat. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> How goes the opera? The opera coming along, Phoebe, coming along. I'm running the whole shebang, you know. Well, congratulations. How'd you ever get stuck with that job? Well, I just took it over to help Judge Hooker out. After all, I know how to handle women, and he doesn't. Oh. <laughs> well, I do. I don't have any trouble with women. Even a whole committee of women. And you know why, Peavy? I don't ask them. 
I tell them. Treat them rough. That's the way, is it? And you're darn right. <laughs> Women just want to be told, that's all, Peavy. And they want a man to tell them. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to agree with me, P.B. You never agree with me about anything. I agree with you when I think you're right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, that's practically never. That's what I say. <laughs> now, you're wrong about this. Women like to be treated rough. They want to be bossed around. That's female psychology. Do you uh, know this for a fact, Mr. Gildersleeve, or have you just been reading some magazine? I know it for a fact. <laughs> did you ever try it? No, can't say I ever did. You better not, P.B. I doubt if you're the type. You have to be the caveman type to get away with it. Now, here I am with all these women on this opera committee, and when I say jump, they jump. You just tell them jump, just like that. That's it. Jump, Mrs. Pettibone. Jump, Mrs. Bullard. Jump, ladies. Jump. And they jump. I'd certainly like to see that. <laughs> uh, did you come in here for anything particular, Mr. Gilmore? No, just out for a breath of air, Peavy. Better get back and start cracking the whip, though. They'll be getting out of their cages. Take it easy, Peavy. If any women try to shove you around, shove them right back. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> All right, now, Leroy, we'll check the list of box holders. Gosh, Uncle, I'm tired of checking stuff. Why can't Marge check anything? Your sister's going to see about her costume. Costume? Is she going to be in the opera? No, she's going to sell programs. <clears throat> now, box A downstairs. Does that mean she gets to see the show? I suppose so. Jeepers, what about me? I didn't think you'd enjoy it, my boy. I enjoy anything at night. <laughs> well, we'll see. Now, box A... Oh, uh, nuts. Whoever it is, tell him I'm not at home. Okay. Oh, hi, Miss Goodwin. Hi, Mrs. Ransom. Hello, Leroy. Is your uncle home? Of course he is. We saw him through the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes care of that. Come on in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, well, Leela and Eve. Come on in. Come on in. Leroy, you go in the study and check this list, will you, my boy? Come down. Christmas is coming, Leroy. <laughs> okay. Boy, it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, sit down, ladies. Make yourself comfy. How's everything going? Everything's going all right, Throckmorton. Only there's something you'll have to straighten out. Well, you know me. Bing, bing, I give my decision. Throckmorton, you told me this morning I was to be head patroness. And now I find Miss Goodwin somehow has the impression she was to be. Oh, oh, that... Do you remember how I got the impression I was to be head patron of Throckmorton? Well, now, let's see. Been so busy, so many details to be taken care of. You told me. That's how. I did? You couldn't have Throckmorton because you distinctly told me I could have it. I didn't even ask, remember? <laughs> well, I remember something about it. Do you remember your conversation with me? I guess so, only... Um... Only what? Oh, I don't know. Is it possible, Throckmorton, that you've promised both of us we can be head patroness? Yes, it's possible. Ye gods, what difference does it make? It's just a title. Who cares who's head patroness anyway? Well, I certainly care. It's very important, Throckmorton. I don't see why. Well, the head patroness appears on the stage between the acts in a spotlight, and the star of the opera kisses her hand. Well, even so. You saw my dress, Throckmorton, and if anyone in town has a more impressive one... I don't consider it important. But it just so happens that I have the same dressmaker. Well! Uh, well, uh, I didn't think you'd care about a thing like this. Well, I do. But perhaps not for the same reasons as Mrs. Ransom. She seems to have forgotten that the head patroness has to make a speech. I hope you'll want the committee effectively represented. Oh, yes, that's very important. Well, I hope you don't think I'm tongue-tied, Throckmorton. Oh, no. Well, I... <laughs> I once gave a talk before a thousand people down home. The time the Sunday school burned down and they raffled off a Buick to buy a new one. You made a speech? I certainly did. Yes. The lucky ticket is number 93. <laughs> Eve Goodwin, I made a regular speech. I may not be a school teacher, but I'm just as... Now, Leela. But I won't stand here and be insulted. And if you cared all about the appearance of the head patroness, you'll choose me. Not necessarily. Of course, if he wants a matronly type. Eve. Matronly? I'm not 
considered matronly. But even if I was, I'd rather be matronly than scrawny. Mrs. Ransom, you be careful. I won't. Throckmorton, make up your mind. Is it me or her? Yes, Throckmorton. Is it she or I? <laughs> Widow. Oh, ladies, ladies. For heaven's sake, let's be reasonable. All right, give us a decision. You're the chairman. Well, now let's see. Uh, by the way, whatever happened to Miss Tate? Don't try to change the subject. Oh, but I, I'm terribly concerned about her, either. After all, swallowing a pin. She coughed it up. She's perfectly all right. Now, who's going to be head patron? Poor Miss Tate. Must have been very painful. Never heard her at all. Now, stop shilly shallying, Throckmorton. Well, now, ladies, I have to think. Oh, uh, doorbell. Excuse me, ladies. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Mrs. Pettibone and Mrs. Bullard. Gee. Uh, excuse me, I think I heard the telephone. I didn't hear anything. They're after me, Leroy. They're after me. Oh. Women, women, women trapped in the hen roost. Now I know how that poor dressmaker felt. Leroy, quick. Get me a pin and a glass of water. We'll be hearing from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. You'll remember a few minutes ago, I had a conversation with a lady about what a swell spread parquet margarine is for lunchbox sandwiches, because you can spread it so easily and quickly, and that you can't beat parquet for economy, because it's only about half the price of costly spreads. But perhaps the thing that makes parquet margarine a favorite of millions is its fresh, dairy-like flavor. For sandwiches, hot breads, pancakes, and waffles... Parquet margarine is still unmatched for flavor. Made from selected farm products, vegetable oils rich in energy and pasteurized skim milk, and with important vitamin A added, Parquet margarine is one of the most nourishing foods you can buy today. So be sure to try this nourishing spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. <laughs> Folks, you know how kids are always pestering you to tell them a story over and over? Well, I thought, why not just have a phonograph record you could play? Make the kids happy and save yourself the trouble. And that's just what I did. I made three records. Puss in Boots, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Rumpelstiltskin. All good stories with pretty music, too. <laughs> you can get the album at any music store right now. <laughs> Make a mighty nice Christmas present. <laughs> just thought I'd mention it. Good night. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore The music is by Jack Meekin This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company And inviting you to listen in again next week For the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve For tempting variety at mealtime, treat your family to food zestfully flavored with Kraft prepared mustards. Remember, there are two popular varieties. A tangy golden Kraft salad mustard that's mild and delicately spiced. And a sharper Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added. They're both grand flavor treats in sandwiches and on frankfurters and cold cuts. And mighty appetizing blended into cooked foods, too. Buy both kinds. Ask for Kraft Salad Mustard and Kraft Horseradish Mustard when you shop tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company.